Welcome to the Counselors of Real Estate Thought Leaders podcast series. In these episodes, you'll hear candid and compelling perspectives from subject matter experts who not only represent diverse and novel thinking, but also question prevailing thinking. I'm John Leary, CRE, Senior Valuation Consultant with Advisor Consulting in New Haven, Connecticut, and I'm glad to be hosting this podcast. Members of the Counselors of Real Estate are accomplished leaders and trusted advisors, developing strategies for and finding solutions to complex real estate challenges. Counselors practice in 21 countries and offer expertise in more than 60 real estate disciplines across all asset classes. I was honored to be the team leader of the CRE Consulting Corps assignment to advise St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Bonaire, Virginia, just outside of Richmond, on the best use of its real property assets once its lower school relocated to a new building on a different campus. The team included David Baird, CRE of Baltimore, Tim Lowe, CRE of El Segundo, California, Casey Kemper, CRE of New York City, and Bill Quinlivan, CRE of Milwaukee. The Consulting Corps is a public service initiative of the counselors that provides objective real estate analysis strategic counsel, and action plans for municipalities, not-for-profit organizations, government entities, educational institutions, and other owners of real property. Our guest today will take us behind the scenes on why St. Michael's fall down the consulting corps and share the challenges they encountered in implementing the recommendations of the CRE team. Please welcome Reverend Jeanne Godsey, the rector of St. Michael's, and Doug Schepter, CRE, principal of CDS Realty Company in Richmond, Virginia, and a St. Michael's Vestry member who introduced the consulting corps to the church. Doug, as a parishioner of St. Michael's, what prompted you to reach out to the consulting corps? Sure, thank you, John. By way of background, the, the church started St. Michael's School as an outreach ministry back in the late 1950s. Uh, The school grew uh, over the decades to eclipse the church in size. Um, And the school was gifted land to build some new facilities off of the original St. Michael's campus. Uh, This left the old school buildings that were on the campus that were in disrepair in the hands of the church. Property is all owned by the Southern Diocese of of Virginia, of the Episcopal Church. Uh, The school's buildings were operated when the school was present on the campus through a cost share agreement between the church and the school. However, when the school finished building their new buildings off campus, that church and school um, uh, cost share agreement would then cease, and that would leave the church with the responsibility for all the upkeep and operating expenses on the buildings. And as I said, the buildings dated back to as late as as 1958, and the the church portion of the property encompassed about 19,000 square feet, uh, whereas the school property was about 26, almost 27,000 square feet, which is about 58% of the building area. All those buildings would be then vacated, and the church would be responsible for the upkeep, maintenance, everything else associated with it, which, as you can imagine, was was going to be extensive. Uh, That being said, we proactively formed two groups, uh, between the Episcopal School and the and the uh, church as a committee to uh, evaluate how we could proceed with this transition from the vacation of the properties to the uh, to the church uh, at that time I, um, I I thought it'd be a good idea to reach out to the counselors of real estate uh, to see if they could be of help in resolving this matter. And that's when we got in touch 
with the counselors, and uh, they liked the idea of the assignment. They constructed a team, which John led in the process, and they came on the campus about, uh, I guess it was uh, about four years ago, to do the, the consulting core evaluation. And uh, uh, with that, I probably should turn it over to um, uh, the next person on the agenda here to, to proceed with how that worked out. Oh, thank you, Doug. I am. Um, it. We were blessed at St. Michael's to have Doug as part of our leadership team at that time, and I had never heard of the counselors of real estate. But his um, his experience with counselors um, led us to apply for the process to uh, uh, apply to be part of the counseling uh, the consulting core um, experience, and it was really wonderful and at just the right time in our process of figuring out what to do with our property, and so I. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better process in terms of John and the rest of your team coming and um, interviewing the people who were uh, stakeholders in our land and our building use, um, looking at the uh, applicable laws and uh, zoning requirements and all that. And then what was very helpful for our team was look, was um, offering an evaluation as to the value and the risk of the different options we had of, in front of us. Um, the, the one with the highest the highest value and the least risk was to subdivide and sell the property um, as opposed to demoing and putting up for land sale or holding it and leasing it or um, as churches are wont to do moth you know just like moth buying it and let's decide this later on that had the highest risk and the highest you know the least amount of value to us and and it was it was good it was a good tool for me as a leader to say we have to make a decision to move forward and so um, and that's what ended up happening. We uh, we continued our research. The counselors were able to help us uh, uh, talk to other stakeholders, including who became our eventual um, uh, buyer of the uh, previous St. Michael's campus. Um, uh, Riverside School near us, uh, next door to us, ended up purchasing the campus. And we found we came to a very good agreement with that. So, um, so we, we couldn't have been more pleased with the process. The consulting core team spent five days on site and interviewed the key stakeholders, municipal and county officials, and potential end users. One of the major issues was the complex intertwining of the campus facilities, such as shared heating systems and access points. A key issue was to identify those portions of the campus that were essential to the continued ministry of the church and those portions that could be made available for reuse by other entities. Once that step was taken, we were able to consider the strengths and weaknesses of various reuse scenarios and formulate our recommendations. We took on one other important matter, the negotiation of a transition agreement between the church and the school board. Both parties have been going back and forth on this issue and running into some brick walls. Small issues like, yes, we do owe you some money, or no, we don't owe you some money. After our onsite, Bill Quinlivan took the time to get to the bottom of these issues with each group and drafted a proposed transition agreement that was reviewed by the consulting board team and then passed on to the church and school board. This became a template for eventual agreement. Yeah, that was a big help. Um, yeah, of course, it went through a uh, a few reiterations in terms of the first the first draft to what we end up signing, but we were finally able to come to that agreement and having those third party eyes definitely helped quite a bit. The key to the transition agreement was having the school board provide sufficient funds so that the church did not run into a huge deficit covering the interim expenses of maintaining the property after the school relocated while negotiating for the reuse of the school portions of the property. Exactly. Exactly. And we were able to also, um, using some of the philosophy, we sold the major part of the campus, but we are also um, leasing out some of the space that we're continuing to own within our own parish house to um, other entities. And that's uh, beneficial on a lot of levels, financial as well as community engagement. And so that's been important as well. Well, I think that about covers the topic. Thank you, Reverend Godsey and Doug. We learned from our assignment that St. Michael's holds a special presence in the town of Bonaire. The CRE Consulting Corps was pleased to have played a small role in helping your faith community take steps in a new direction. 
For more information on the Consulting Board, please visit www.cre.org. Join us next time for another episode of the CRE Thought Leaders Podcast. I'm John Leary. On behalf of the Councils of Real Estate, thank you.